Hey guys, welcome back to Enlighten Turtle. It's your host Kev here. So we've got a bit of a different topic for today's video. Today we're going to be discussing mythical creatures from around the world. As you know, there's no topic that's off limits around here. The more mysterious, the better really, to be fair. Um, but I keep coming across like mythical creatures uh, as I'm reading different histories and laws and things like that. So I thought I'd start putting some of them down on the channel. Uh, who knows if people enjoy it, maybe this will turn into a little series of videos. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. Chimeria. The liminal Chimeria, or She-Goat, is mentioned for the first time in Book 6 of the Iliad and is said to have been born in the Anatolian region of Lycia. Homer, circa 850 BC, venerates this twisted daughter of Typhon as being of divine stock, describing her as having a lion's head and a goat's body and a dragon's tail. The Greek poet Hesiod tells in his Theogony, circa 700 BC, of a great and terrible creature swift of foot and strong. And he also makes mention of the beast possessing three heads, as she often appears in 5th century bronze works. Hesiod also names Edchinda, the half-woman, half-snake mate of Typhon, as the mother of the Chimeria. This unconquerable, fire-breathing monstrosity was responsible for burning the city of Lycia to the ground, killing all within. She was eventually slain by the Corinthian hero Bellerophon, who soared high above her vomit of flames and threw his lead-tipped spear down her throat from his winged steed Pegasus. The melting lead choked the Chimeria to death and thus brought an end to its life. This famous battle was widely depicted in early 7th century BC art. The true origins of the Chimeria, however, may lie within the constantly burning mountain, Mount Chimeria. A place Pliny the Elder explains, indeed burned with a flame that does not die by day nor night. The Sphinx. The Andros Sphinx, or Man Sphinx, was widely depicted in ancient Egypt around 1500 BC and featured a human head connected to a resting lion's body. Entire avenues of such sphinxes still line and guard the approaches to the tombs and temples of Egypt to this day. The Greek Sphinx meanwhile possesses the body and paws of a lion and the head and breasts of a woman, the wings of an eagle and sometimes the tail of a dragon. She is believed to have hailed from either India or Ethiopia. According to Hesiod, she was the daughter of Echinde, also believed to have been the mother of the Chimeria, and fathered either by her son, Orthrus, the two-headed dog, or the dragon himself, Typhon. In the story of Oedipus and the Sphinx, circa 450 BC, she guarded the entrance to the city of Thebes, lying in wait atop Mount Phicion, for passers-by who she would seize and set a riddle upon them with the pain of death. The riddle goes as follows. Which creature has one voice and yet becomes four-footed, two-footed and three-footed? No one answered correctly until Oedipus, who replied, Man. The answer is man. Man who crawls on all fours as a baby, then walks on two feet as an adult, and then uses a walking stick in his old age. Furious at having had her riddle solved, the Sphinx threw herself 
from the precipice. A second, possibly more ancient riddle is also recorded in the annals of history that goes as follows. There are two sisters. One gives birth to the other and she, in turn, gives birth to the first. Who are the two sisters? I left a little pause there on purpose just to see if anyone had a light bulb moment or knew that riddle. The answer to that riddle was night and day. The Gorgons. The term Gorgon derives from the ancient Greek Gorgos or dreadful and Sanskrit Garanga or guttural and relates to anything unusually hideous, especially women. The most infamous examples in classical mythology were the three monstrous winged sisters with scathing serpents for hair, Svethno, Yorail, and the terrifying Medusa. Each had vast mouths, packed with sharp fangs and cruel teeth, brazen claws and glaring eyes, and each of the sisters had only to glance at anyone unfortunate enough to cross their paths for them to be turned instantly into stone. Of the three, only Medusa was mortal. The Gorgons appear in the earliest Greek writings, including those of Homer, Pliny the Elder and Theodorus. Theodorus, circa 90-30 BC, believed them to be a tribe of women from Libya, who eventually met their deaths at the hand of Hercules. According to Ovid, another writer, Medusa was once a beautiful maiden, vain of her loving hair, but after she was assaulted by Poseidon on the steps of Athena's temple, a furious Athena transformed Medusa's hair into a crawling, writhing nest of vicious snakes, quote, that she may alarm her surprised foes with terror. Metamorphosis, book four. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.